And welcome back, everybody. This is The Cube, Silicon Angle's premier TV production, where we go out to the tech events, the top tech events. Uh, it's to separate the signal from the noise, we bring on the smartest guests at the shows uh, to really provide you with the information on the enterprise IT trends and technologies that you're interested in. Uh, my name is Jeff Kelly. I'm with Wikibon.org. And we're here, of course, at uh, DuckConf 2012, which is Splunk's annual user conference. I'm joined by Jeff Frick, my uh, colleague and co-host uh, on theCUBE from SiliconANGLE. Thank you, Jeff. And we are joined by uh, two guests this, this segment. We've got Lena Joshi, who's the Senior Director of Solutions Marketing at Splunk, a very busy woman with, with all the different uh, new releases that are coming out. And, and, uh, and a little bit title challenge. I think you have to get one of those funny uh, Splunk titles. We've got to work on that for <laughs> you. Uh, like the super coolest gal, or I don't, I don't know. We've seen some great Splunk titles here. And also we're joined by Matt Culver. He's an IT guy with Discover Communications. And I'm sure he's happy that it's not Shark Week this week, so he could actually take some time off. He's going to tell us a little bit about what really happens on the front line uh, in, in his world and how Splunk has helped him out. So welcome both of you to theCUBE. Thank you. Uh, Glad to be here. Is the show going well for you so far? Absolutely, loving it. Loving it? So what, what's been uh, kind of the biggest surprise that, that you've seen, Matt, in some of the sessions that you've sat in? Well, you know, I mean, I would say the biggest surprise wouldn't even have been in the sessions so much so as just having all the employees around here and, and accessible and able to communicate with them about Splunk and ask questions and be involved. That's great. Yeah, I think the, the community aspect on a show like this that's still relatively new, relatively young, as we've, as we've seen with all of our guests, is still a lot of communication uh, and, and information sharing and best practices sharing and everyone actually is, is talking about it. It's not just a vendor fest, which is great. And Joshi, what about you? You've got a ton of product releases that have come out recently, probably the biggest one with the cloud offering. Uh, Splunk Storm, yes. Um, this is uh, Splunk being available as a service for application developers in the cloud. And uh, we've, we've seen a really good traction so far, and okay. we continue to get a lot of interest. Um, the app that is catching everybody's attention here at, um, uh, at, um, at dot .conf is actually the Splunk app for VMware. Okay. It was GA uh, a few months ago, and uh, we're showing off some really, really cool stuff with the app here. Lots of interest from customers and virtualization, since it's one of the biggest trends of the last decade. And uh, knowing what Splunk can do with all that virtualization data is super exciting to a lot of people. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, Splunk's overall strategy when it comes to applications and, and what role that plays in Splunk trying to expand and become, as we heard from Godfrey Sullivan yesterday, the kind of an enterprise data platform versus a, a point solution. So what role do the big data apps play? And then maybe if you could dig into uh, the VMware app a little bit. I know we have a, a large number of our viewing audience as interested in virtualization, especially where it converges with big data and how that interacts. So Absolutely. So one of, one of the things that, uh, that we've really brought uh, out to the forefront this year is this notion of a connected data center and how Splunk enables it. You may have many different technologies in your data center interacting with each other. And our goal is to make the data from all of those technologies available in one place. Now this is not a new idea, it's just Splunk is uniquely positioned to deliver on this idea. When you think about the problem, right, it's lots of different technologies providing data in a variety of formats, in, in um, you know, these, these uh, different types of data that mean different things. Being able to aggregate it and uh, index it, analyze it, harness it, is a big data challenge. And you can't use a traditional technology to harness all that. So that's what uniquely positions Splunk. You think about the types of data, the volume, variety, and velocity of data that's coming from all of the technologies in your data center. That's a big data challenge. And you need a solution like Splunk to really bring it all together. Now, wh where the virtualization app uh, plays is virtualization really has forced these conversations in the data center that weren't happening before, right? You had the server guys on one side, the storage guys on one side, applications guys on one side, and they didn't want to talk to each other or do anything. But now with virtualization, they're forced to not only talk to each other, like I need a virtual machine and I don't know where it's running and can you please tell me what's going on, but they're also forced to talk to their neighbors, the people who are, who are sharing those resources with them. 
And this is the reason why the, there is so much demand for an app for virtualization is because the data that will help you get visibility into what's happening with my virtual machine, what, who's taking all the resources on a server, is really hard to get at. And Splunk can get at that data and, and visualize it in a way that's not been possible before. So Matt, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your role uh, at Discovery and, and what you're doing. And then maybe kind of let's explore the challenges you were uh, facing around uh, what Lena has been talking about around big data in your sure, infrastructure. Sure, sure. So I'm in the Global Operations Center at Discovery. Mm -hmm. um, so I, my primary role is operations, and what we're using Splunk for is primarily operations, but also we're using it for a lot of, um, a lot of compliance data. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've been doing that for some time, and we found Splunk very effective in that role. So we've heard some stories about how uh, Splunk customers kind of started off downloading the free, the free application and kind of expanding from there. How did you kind of come to uh, work with Splunk? I mean, was there a, a key challenge you had to overcome and you just weren't able to, to do so with your current technology? Or what, what's really brought you to Splunk? Well, you know, the neat thing about Splunk is it's, it's really a game changer in technology. I mean, prior to that, the only thing that really was around was Grep. And, you know, there are some other smaller solutions, but Splunk, the engine itself is really what, where the power comes in. Mm -hmm. And the ability just to feed it that text data and get at it any way that you want to is what really makes it powerful. And then, you know, since they've expanded it and started building these apps on top of it, that just makes it even more so useful for us. Very cool. Good. That's good. What kind of compliance data? Again, is, uh, from the layman sitting outside, I'm thinking Shark Week, I'm thinking uh, uh, dirty jobs, I'm thinking all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> what, what, what kind of compliance stuff do you have to be concerned about and why do you need something to really keep on top of that? Right, so you know, we, uh, we adhere to ITIL standards and we've got a lot of SOX compliance data, a lot of it's security data and things like that where we've got to make sure you know, people aren't accessing machines that shouldn't be. People have certain roles there and you know, they can't get into certain systems and which that all just needs to be tracked and accounted for and Splunk makes it really easy to grab that data in there from all of our disparate systems around generate custom reports and, and push it up to the top where everybody's looking for it. And was there any, is, is it just a better tool to do something you haven't been able to do before or have you had any kind of uh, aha moments where you know, you've really seen something uh, that you weren't expecting or, or to get down another path or you know, kind of demonstrated the other value in that data that maybe nobody knew was there before? Well, you know, it is another app, but it's the best app for what its purpose is. In addition to that, I mean, we have definitely had a lot of aha moments in terms of what I'm doing with it in terms of operations. Um, I do a lot of automation, and Splunk is perfect for that because I can not only pull the data in, I can report on it. It's got all the amazing dashboards. But in addition to that, I can complete the workflow, and, and I can have it automatically create tickets in our ticketing system and, and really bring the, our entire IT group together in terms of being able to facilitate the beginning to end process with Splunk. Can you contrast that to what you were doing previously? I mean, what, how was that a very manual process? What you, or were yeah, you just not of, able to do a lot of it at yeah, all? Yeah, a, a lot of custom programming. I mean, mm -hmm. certainly a lot of it I wasn't able to do. And, you know, we were struggling to do with various systems and doing things manually and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, you know, that's why I say Splunk was certainly a game changer in the fact that, that we're able to go in there and just, you know, do it completely differently now in, in a better way. Cool. Um, so, you know, we're here at the show and there's one of the, the themes really is around the community um, here and, and kind of customers learning from customers. Uh, so just would love to get your impressions of the community that's being built up around uh, Splunk. I mean, in the big data world overall, we're seeing community play a very important role, whether it's the Hadoop community uh, or other big data technologies, but certainly here at Splunk, they're very focused on kind of building up a community and helping, uh, allowing customers to help each other. So uh, what are your thoughts on that, and uh, what is your take? You mentioned kind of the vibe here, but as you've come to interact with some of your uh, you know, fellow Splunk users, what kind of uh, information have you learned, and what role does the community play, and how are you going to be using Splunk? Um, well, you know, uh, they have a Splunk community on their website, obviously, and, uh, and I've just noticed in general, I mean, the people here, they're really helpful. Everybody is here to basically share their experiences with Splunk and, and give people other ideas of what they're doing and how they're doing things a little bit differently. And the neat thing about Splunk being as generalized as it is, is that everybody kind of can do things in a different way with it. And so coming together like this allows us to share that. And I've noticed that, uh, you know, there's a lot of really neat things that people are doing and there's a lot of things that we can learn from sharing with other people here. And, and to follow up with you, you Lena, on that same topic, because, you know, you're your solutions uh, marketing person, you've got roadmaps, you've got new features and functionality that you want to roll out, but at the same time, you've got this active community that's, that's building apps, um, and, and you want to encourage that. 
you know, how are you managing and, and how much is that community of kind of app development part of your process and part of your roadmap? So um, they're a very active part of our, uh, our, our process and roadmap. In fact, later on today we have sessions on, you know, tell us what you want to build and tell us what you want us to build, that sort of dialogue with our customers. But even in the absence of that, if you just walk around the show floor over here, you'll see a number of partners who've already sort of taken matters into their own hands and say, and have identified market needs. People need XYZ with Splunk. And they've gone ahead and built, developed those apps uh, already. And right. they're showcasing some of the apps here. It's, it's been a fantastic uh, eye opener for us to see how much, how active our community has been, not just in terms of customers, but in terms of partners building their businesses on Splunk. Right, and then does that, does that kind of push your needle when you're prioritizing more towards kind of platformy type of stuff to, to, for enablement versus more kind of solution feature functionality? Absolutely, absolutely it does. It, it sort of helps us, uh, you know, focus on the things that are really hairy and uh, we can't expect partners to deliver and focus on um, making, uh, enabling technologies available for partners to take advantage of best practices, uh, the right kind of APIs and SDKs, the right kind of hooks basically into Splunk. And a lot of these have been delivered already, so, um, and that's why you're seeing so many new solutions here at, uh, at, uh, at the Solutions Exchange. Yeah, it's, it's really been a, a consistent theme as we've had these interviews with, with people from Splunk that everybody likes going after these big, hairy problems. So I think we may have your new title now. It may be the queen big of the hairy. big, hairy problem. Maybe not, I don't know, that might not work. I want to rethink that one. We might rethink it, but, but it, is, it is great that you guys continue to focus on these really big challenges and the enthusiasm around attacking big challenges seems to keep everybody pretty excited. Exciting. And then we've got folks that are, that are using it and doing stuff they couldn't do before and or extending the application uh, for these very special purposes. Yeah, could, could we dig in a little bit more on um, the uh, Splunk Storm? So you've, you've now deployed, uh, make it available in the cloud, basically for, as I understand it, for developers who are building applications from scratch, either on Amazon or Google's uh, compute engine or other uh, cloud, cloud environments. What kind of um, led you to that conclusion that you needed to, to really get out into that cloud environment? So there is, uh, what, what, we, uh, what we identified pretty early on, uh, at least a year or more ago, was that there is this big transformational shift going on in the industry with people moving to the cloud. And uh, other than the hype associated with, with you know, cloud, uh, there are actually people who are using tremendous amounts of cloud services. They're just not in the formal like um, purchasing processes that exist in most big organizations. These are typically development or engineering organizations that are part of bigger organizations or even much smaller organizations who are just looking at the cloud as a great way to go off and bring the applications to market, right? It's, it's, they don't have to wait for infrastructure anymore. They don't have to um, wait for some, some guy in purchasing to approve their PO anymore. They can just go off, get the service, use as much as they want pay for only what they've used and sort of uh, deliver applications in a very agile fashion. And for these kind of people, to a I mean, to ask them to download a piece of software and install it and manage it and maintain it is, is, a, is a hard thing. They typically don't even have data centers. They run almost exclusively in the cloud. And so we wanted two things. One is we wanted to make the whole thing easy for them. We wanted to make it available as a service meaning someone can just go log in, send their data, start using it without having to download, install, maintain software, uh, scale it really easily. So when they want to uh, index additional amounts of data, just move, the, move a slider and you get more capacity provision to you. And the third thing is that we wanted to make it, you know, fit in with their model of purchasing. So it is, Splunk Storm has a different pricing model. It is pay monthly. Mm -hmm. You subscribe to a plan and you pay on a monthly basis, and uh, and that fits in really nicely with this notion of disposable infrastructure that a lot of our Splunk Cloud, uh, Splunk Storm customers have. And do you anticipate uh, Splunk Storm customers at some point, you know, maybe as they starting their projects in the cloud, but bringing those back in the house at some point? And and how will Splunk help uh, support them in that transition? We we absolutely anticipate that uh, a lot of these uh, smaller companies will grow to be bigger companies. A lot of the smaller projects will grow to be bigger projects because. If anything, the cloud is meant for scale, and and uh, and and people are going to do this, uh, you know, large scale stuff in the cloud. We're also noticing that once you get to a particular scale in the cloud, then it becomes more cost effective for people to just bring it in house. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind Splunk Storm is, if you're in the cloud, you can get the facility of Splunk, the the flexibility, the fabulous search language available to you in the cloud. 
if you want to bring it in house, Splunk Enterprise is there to support you as well. Yeah. W what's your deployment, Matt? Um, we've got our own uh, physical deployment. Physical deployment. Yeah. We've well, got a, we've got a lot of systems around the globe and uh, you know in pretty much every region, and so we just found that that works out best for us to to have the servers at our facilities. So looking looking ahead, uh, you know, obviously Splunk is is growing. They're they're working on you know new apps all the time. What is kind of on your roadmap? And maybe uh, you know all companies have to grow and uh, keep keep expanding. Uh, what would you like to see Splunk maybe uh, expand into in different areas? Are there particular use cases you, you're interested in? What's kind of on your roadmap? Your challenges that you're hoping to t tackle with Splunk's help? Well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to use Splunk in the operations, you know, predominantly, and so that's where I'm hoping that they have the majority of the growth. Um, apps like the VMware app are extremely helpful for us in, in allowing us to get to that data that we really have a hard time getting to. And so the more that Splunk rules out apps like that, mm -hmm. the more useful Splunk will be to us. Uh, but you know, we're also developing a lot of custom apps and things like that as well because we've got our own applications that we need to facilitate. So uh, you know, we're going to continue to go down the operations road and, and see you know, how far we can get as far as like, getting all the data in there and, and being able to automate as much as possible. Okay, great. All right, guys. Well, I think we're just about out of time. Thank you so much for joining us Thank in theCUBE. We really appreciate it. Love getting the insights of a practitioner. And, and Lena as well released some really interesting insights about the product uh, direction at Splunk. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. And uh, so you're watching theCUBE. This is SiliconANGLE's premier TV broadcast. We go to events like .com 2012 here in Las Vegas and bring you the, the top uh, tech trends and uh, execs and customers. Uh, to share their knowledge with you. So we will be right back with some more guests. Uh, we've got a full day of coverage ahead, so please stay with us.